Welcome to Christmas Garage. We got us a conforms to 1998 year model Ford Ranger with a 2300, one of my favorite engines on the planet. She's got the old hucky buck skip. They're notorious about the coil packs going out. Somebody's done some work on it. It might have something wrong with the motor. I don't know. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna take y'all along with us. Hang out. One of the first things I want to do is I want to check the firing order. I know some people have worked on this before. I want to make sure that all the firing order is correct. And I've done that. Um, if you look, you've got two coil packs. This is a dual plug head. And I'd like to apologize to y'all. I said this was a 2.3, but I was looking doing research and it's a 2.5. This is the one that's got a little bit longer stroke, a um, little bit longer rod, the one that the racers like to get the crankshaft and cheat with at the dirt tracks. But anyhow, uh, looking here, We've got, if you start back here at the back, it's one, three, four, two. And then the front one is the same coil pack, but it's, it's flipped around. So it's two, four, three, one. So um, anyhow, I've double checked those, made sure they're going to the right plug. They are. The next thing to do would be pull a compression check. If all my compression's good and all my plug wires are good, I'm probably going to head to a fuel issue, maybe a bad injector or um, something to that effect. Um, but we need to eliminate that it's something in the engine. So uh, let's get on that. I prefer not drive. You can unplug most of these sensors. I'm just getting this breather hose out of the way. Just a few small plugs, a few little clips, hose, and there she is. We've got a broke vacuum line right to start with, I see here. That could be some issue. Well, she goes right down here to this heater control valve. Yep. Plug back in there. Oh, you know what, guys? This old plastic vacuum line, mm-hmm, you guessed it. She goes to the bad right right there. As you can see, this piece has gone to the bag. I still think it may reach down there. We're gonna try it again. Let's see if we got any other weak spots. No. Let's see if we can get it down in there. Oh yeah, she'll still reach. You gotta be careful. This old plastic vacuum line, mm-hmm. She goes to the bag all the time. At least they've kept all these brackets out of the way. I can actually pull all these plugs out without um, removing any more brackets. So. Thank you. All right. As you can tell, That plug there, yeah, she's got a lot of oil on there. Crazy looking, that's definitely, that's number one cylinder. That could be the one that's dead because all the rest of these, see, that's number two. She don't look bad. Number three don't look bad. Number four don't look bad. So, um, I think we're gonna go to number one because number one seems to have the uh, the one that's different. So that could be our problem. Uh, she might have something going on in number one cylinder. I hope it's nothing crazy like a, a cam lobe out or, or something 
uh, gone to the bad inside the motor, that wouldn't be cool. Hopefully it's just something simple. But we're gonna pull a compression check on it. We'll see what's going on. All right, I got this old hobo freight uh, compression tester. Um, I'm saying it should be up in the upwards of 100 pound or better. I'd love to see 120, but this motor's got a few miles on it, so I'm not sure. All you do is you just take and screw this right down in the cylinder hole. Just like that. Plug the old girl up. It's like an air coupler. I'm going to try to lay this. Ooh, she, that hose right there, she going to the bad. When you work on vehicles, you see a lot of stuff that's going to the bad. We're gonna crank over on a little bit. We'll see what number one's got. Oh man, 150 pounds. That means there's nothing wrong with number one cylinder. She's pretty solid. All right, we got her on number two right here. You should be able to see that. Maybe not behind there too bad. Let's see where she goes to. My tester has gone to the bad. Flat gone to the bad. All right, it's like this. We pulled all the plugs out. We did a compression check on all four cylinders. All four cylinders have over 150 pounds of compression on them. I mean, fantastic compression. The motor is not hurt in any shape or form as far as combustion chamber is concerned. I don't think it's got any burnt valves. I don't think it has any um, blowed head gasket or anything like that. Um, I, number one plug was filthy. It had just gunk built all up on it like it was getting you know, like it was either not firing or it was getting too much fuel so um, it still could be a coil pack I'm gonna probably switch these coil packs and see if that makes a difference if it doesn't I'm gonna lean towards maybe a leaky injector I think I've seen these injectors give trouble before so uh, we're gonna go back in with the plugs and we'll put the plug wires back on it we're gonna change on the uh, coil pack and uh, we'll see what happens from there We have narrowed it down to, I'm pretty certain that it's the fuel injector on number one cylinder. Um, I'm gonna put a Noid light in it and see if it's getting fire. If it's getting fire to it, we know it's not a broken wire and we will um, go that route. All right, I've got my my Noid light hooked up with this little extension. It come from Harbor Freight. This thing's pretty legit. It's hooked up out there on the uh, fuel injector. We're gonna fire it up and see if this thing's fire, uh, flashing. As you can see, she's flashing. I hope y'all can see that on the camera. That means we're getting, we're getting fire to the uh, injector. Update, injectors are about $65 a piece. I found them for about 40 on Amazon. Either way, it's going to be $200 some dollars to put all four injectors in this truck. So I wanted to verify 100% that that's what was wrong. I've took the upper plenum off right here, just slid it over out of the way. Haven't really unhooked everything, just most of what has been hooked to it I've unhooked. Um, we've got all the injectors here, one, two, three, and four. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap probably four and one, cause four was working and it was easy to get to and unplug also. So I'll swap them two. We'll put it back together just to verify that that's what it is. If that's what it is, I'll have to order some injectors. So that's where we're at guys. I'll let y'all know. All right, we got to get this top plenum off so we can get in here to the fuel injectors down in here because we got a bad fuel injector. So y'all watch it. I'm going to time lapse it. So let's get started. Alright, now as you can see, we've got this upper plenum off. This is our fuel rail right here. This is where the fuel comes in. These are seven millimeter. We're gonna take this bolt and this bolt out, seven millimeter, pop this off. We're gonna take this 10 millimeter here, this 10 millimeter here. We're gonna have to unplug all our fuel injectors like so. Just like so. You can squeeze the sides of it. It only pops right off. There it is. And see, there's the whole fuel injector harness. We'll put it over here out of the way. And uh, we're well on our way to uh, getting this fuel rail off. All right, we're going to get right in here, take these seven millimeters out. I'll show you. Sometimes this has got a little bit of pressure on it. So just be careful. Make sure you don't drop them down in the intake there she had a little bit of pressure on it as you can see all right we'll get that down over here out of the way or somewhere like that you can undo it down there but it's just easy to undo it right there There she is, right there. Oh, look. There it is. Gone to the bad. I bet you that's the bad one. All right, I'm gonna go on and change all four of them. And we went, these things are about $55, $60 dollars a piece. And uh, these look right. Mm-hmm. She's pretty. Very pretty. Yep. I think they're gonna work. So what you do is dump gas all over the place. Boop. You just pop them out. Sometimes the O-rings will stay in there, you had to dig them out. But it's not a problem. And yep, that's the one right there. Gone to the bad. This is this is the bad one right here. She has flat gone to the bad. So uh, what I'm gonna do is take these and set them over to the side. And what I like to do is take a little bit of grease. Let's go on and get all these out. 
caution fuel system may be pressurized yeah fine time to let us know that now thanks a lot a little bit of grease on there all it takes all you do is you take these things boop, and they plug right in just like this just that easy Just that easy. And now, same way I did the other, <clears throat> I'll put just a little bit of lubrication, just a wee little bit on each one. So it'll slide down in the holes. And you want to make sure those holes are really clean. I recommend cleaning them out with a rag. Go. And we'll go over here now and we'll put it right back in. And I'll carry you along with me. All right, it's just a matter of, like I said, cleaning those holes out. Make sure this thing is on the proper side. And we'll run them down in. And they'll. Turn these where you can get to them a little better. Um, make sure you lubricate that O-ring a little bit. She sits right on there. Yeah, this is not a not a bad job. The fuel injectors are actually in there now. seven millimeters back in make sure you don't I, I would recommend and I really I should have done this first get you a couple rags and, and pushing these holes so you don't drop anything down in there it's easy to do then you'd be fishing one of them out with a magnet or something because if you crank it up with a motor in there she'll sound like a pea thrasher and she'll be tore everything all to pieces so you just don't want to over tighten them because it's not them that's sealing it up, it's the O-ring that's got it sealed up. So, with that being said, we're going to bring the intake back over here. I'm going to clean this. Actually, let's go on and do this. After you get it tightened all down, you bring your plugs back in here. Just like that. Let's see, we might bring this around back side just like that make sure they're all plugged up good because they're hard to get to when uh when you get it all back on especially these two middle i can unplug the two end ones but the two middle ones are tough 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 <laughs>
I'll see if I can find me another hose put on there. Remember, if she's giving trouble, she's definitely going to the bank. 